Once again, welcome to supplementary elections, the special channel television coverage of the supplementary elections as it has been organized by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Five states have gone to the polls to choose who becomes their next governor. We're talking about Bauchi, uh, where 14 local governments uh, have gone back to the polls. Benue, 22 local government areas. Plateau State, 9 local government areas. Kano, 29 local government areas. And Sakuto, 22 local government areas. We're back in the studio and we're monitoring a collection of results mm. because voting has ended in all of these places. You know, the Independent uh, National Electoral Commission, INEX, trying to make sense of the numbers that have come in so far. Um, we are in the studio. Uh, we have our analyst, Mr. Olad, uh, Mr. Sonny Awonuga. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you very much uh, for joining us in the studio. We also have Mr. Austin Wenze, who has stayed with us since we began, began the program. Olumide, welcome. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be part of the, uh, the panel. I would like to thank our viewers for keeping faith with us uh, for this expanded and extended coverage yeah. of the supplementary elections. Kaede. Definitely. And don't forget, you can catch up on all that you might have missed on our website. That's at channelcv.com. You can go on Twitter and you can also watch us live on YouTube. I mean, we've got you covered as we follow up on all the figures. Kaede. All right. Uh, We'll be going to Benue very shortly. Uh, we'll go to them as soon as I have a directive from, from the powerhouse behind us uh, to go there. But back in the studio, before we went on the news break at, at 12 midnight, mm. we, all right, I understand that Benue is already live on the split screen there. Let's see what's hey, happening. It's a number of uh, DU24 affected. It's a number of registered voters in that RA. One three six one one. Mm -hmm. I will have reports um, from the society in the website. Okay. They are attached. Okay, thank you very much. Please come and submit your results. Taking the details. Okay. Next, local government, please. Piero. Oju, where is this to be warming up? You are welcome, Prof. Good evening. Introduce yourselves and then the results.
Thank you very much. Any cancellation? Okay. The new one. Okay. All right, so we can see that collection of results is still happening right there in Benue State. We'll keep tabs on that. And we're back in the studio. Let, let me ask you, uh, Mr. Sonia Wunika, uh, we've seen too many zeros being, being announced as the collection of results is, is ongoing. We've seen that in Kando, we've seen that in, in, in Sokoto, and we're seeing that in, in Benue as well, meaning that most of the political parties uh, didn't either field candidates or they were not popular enough to, to gather enough votes. Um, and some people have said, it's a complete waste of time. If they had, why don't you just announce those who had votes? What's the implication of, of not announcing it? Well, uh, as long as they are registered uh, political parties, they are allowed to participate in the voting process. Whether or not they actually fielded their candidates uh, is not the issue. So the extent that they are legal entities, they participated in an election, of course the results they scored have to be announced. But the larger picture is uh, this. It takes us back to the most crucial issue of whether it is worth it having so much parties in the political space. When at the end of the day, most of the time, we know that these things are limited to usually two or three parties who are the front runners. So it's a question of going back to the drawing board. Everybody has to be involved right from the National Assembly uh, the executive, even the judiciary too, because uh, by and large, virtually everybody has played uh, a role in all this. I think in the attempt to maybe uh, play democracy and where they say it's a game of numbers, I think we've overdone it. Like for instance, by the time we are having 60 or something political parties, 92. we become a, no 92. Thank you. We become a laughing stock to the whole world because uh, when you look at it, even the cost alone of trying to print a ballot papers, logistics and all that to accommodate about 92 parties. It's just a sheer waste of time for a nation like this. Even the world's uh, let's say largest uh, democracy, America, that uh, gave us this. By and large, they have two 
very prominent their parties, there are others by the fringes. But by the time we are trying to say, oh, yes, we got this from the U.S., and we are having uh, 92 parties, we have reduced to think more or less to a clowning process. So I think the most important thing is we shouldn't lose sight mm -hmm. of that larger picture, which is the need to go back to the drawing board and have legislation such that these parties, whether they think will be, oh, after an election, a party that is not able to measure up to this standard or that is automatically taken as registered, or whether it is just better to make uh, the requirements for registration very stringent. And what we saw is not just every uh, clown who just wakes up one day. I mean, where's the best way to get attention or to get money? <laughs> and this, then the next thing, you know, of course, I we have registered this, we have registered that, forgetting that in trying to say that, okay, we want to empower as many people as possible, let them have different ideologies, different this. The most important thing which should be of what you use exactly is this thing. The whole idea is lost because once that is not curtailed, we'll be having a stuff like this. And of course, you can't say because you want, to, uh, you know, only about uh, eight parties have scored, then you say, okay, they are the ones that have scored uh, zero. Of course, you're exposing yourself to libel, kind of, because uh, the, in, the uh, sequence in which the parties are numbered in the ballot paper is what you actually do. Oh, did the winner is this? No. You announce everything from head to tail because you are the same person who registered uh, these people. So you owe that duty to start from A to Z. You don't pick some numbers that, okay, this is A, this is D, this is a F, therefore the rest who scored zero, let's start uh, mentioning them and all that. I mean, that's not possible. So that's why I said, let's realize that the larger picture is to go back to the drawing board and either have stringent requirements to register these parties or quickly to ensure that after this uh, election, they look at it, okay, this is the minimum one. Those who did not score this, then we shouldn't have more than five. So do you think that it will be fair, very Kadi, to have a two-party or three-party date I just think with five. Two. But two might not be ideal. Okay, five. Two, three, max five. Because um, you really to counter of. diversity. Mm. Yes, because, uh, you know, it's like they say, or oh, just like uh, to quote... Uh, <laughs> The so called the evil, the genius in the past, a little to the left, a little to the right. That means no extremist uh, ideologies. Mm -hmm. Now, there are others too. We might not necessarily align with a little to the left. Thank you. <laughs> right, well, left, or in the middle, that's how we come about the figure five. So, once we're able to do that, all these uh, things we are seeing, we'll be able to reduce it to better. And with so much money on the, in the name of a democracy, with too much money in elections, and at the end of the day, we see so much problems still associated with it. Because it's just like uh, one is lonely, two is company, three is a crowd. Then what do you talk about? Five, ninety, and all that. Now let, let me try to bring in an unusual perspective here. Now some people will say that this is a necessary evil. I mean Nigeria needs to grow through the process. So we'll look back 20 years, 50 years from now, and say, oh yes, this is how we got here. Now you talked about the drawing board, and I'd like to give you figures to help put this in perspective. We just left. Uh, Benue State. Now, in Benue State alone, there are 22 local government areas, and we've just gone through a few of them. So we have a couple of zeros, zeros, zeros to go. I mean, that's minutes or hours. And now, this question is for Mr. Wizzy. Don't you think this should be like our success, part of our success story? Like, you know what? We went through this, so we are, we've graduated, as it were. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the um, most important thing that did the election hold? Yes. Was it peaceful? Yes. Is it credible? Yes or no? Uh, you know, so that's part of going through the process. No problem. Like he rightly said, the system, the whole process is expensive. Our economy cannot sustain, sustain it. You know? And why don't we find a way of getting elected without declaring public holidays without, you know, uh, putting people under the sun uh, and, uh, and all that is, is punishment. And you, you gradually, gradually, if you check the number of voters in 2015 and then 2019, you know, it will tell you that people are getting tired, you know, because more voters participated in the last previous election, you know. By the time all the numbers are... Uh, you know, final results and all that, we'll be able to find out exactly whether we had more, yes. Going through the motion is motion, but there's no movement, mm -hmm. you know. So if you, if, you, if you say, okay, at least 
the, the elections held and all that. That's like going through a, a, the motion. But we have not moved. You know, these people complain that this one is even worse than the previous one. The whole process. This as far one, as that, voter apathy is concerned. Yes, and what again... What for you is the single most salient cause of this apathy that we think is happening People now. don't believe in the whole process. Disillusionment. Disillusionment. They don't believe that it's going to work. They don't believe that, yes, that the right candidate, and democracy everywhere in the world has a way of throwing the wrong people. Because it's a game of numbers. Okay? And people, it's, a, you, know, it's a, you know, people that are popular and all that, and uh, against uh, people that actually want to provide good governance for people. Those who want to provide uh, governance to the people may not get the ticket. Look at what happened in most states. None of the candidates and all, all right. that. Uh, you know? Please kindly you hold your thought for a yeah. minute. Mm -hmm. We understand that the resident electoral commissioner is making a speech. Let's see what he has. The Boko local government election officer for the governorship election was hit by bullets and she's currently receiving treatment. The wounded election officer is from the from the University of Guatemala currently. I regret this unfortunate incident and calls on security agencies to work tirelessly to apprehend these misprints and bring them to judgment. Meanwhile, as a result of this incident, the Commission has no choice but to appoint in her text engineer Dr. Joseph Mung of the University of Guatemala to take over from her as a coalition officer and present the results of Boko local government. The Commission would like to assure the general public that security measures have been put in place to ensure that the supplementary polls in the state are concluded for the winner to be announced as quick as possible. Signed, Dr. Nintawi Iwala, Rector of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, you see the uh, resident electoral commissioner there in Benue State announcing the attack on one of the, uh, the INEC officials there. She was hit by, by a bullet. Uh, we understand that her name, if I can pull her name up right now, um, we got that story. The Boko local government returning officer for the Benue State governorship, supplementary election professor Comfort Dushima T. Uh, Tuliam. A lecturer at the Federal University of Agriculture, Makudi, uh, was last night uh, shot along the Makudi Boko Road while conveying election results from Yandev North to the INEC headquarters there at Makudi uh, for announcement, which was earlier scheduled to begin by, by 10 p.m. Uh, gentlemen. Well, firstly, I think we should, uh, our, our, our sympathy, condolences to any victims. Yeah, of, of any violence that has been recorded in the process of the The source rest in peace. Yes, the fa families have been affected where it is proven that mm. this and that happened and, and it is because of the elections that it occurred, our, our, our sympathy with them. But Mr. Awoniga, yes, what do you think, uh, why such this recurring decimal of violence in these 2019 elections? Uh, well, I'm a bit uh, taken aback. It appears uh, there's so much uh, the synergy with the security forces. Why am I saying this? Uh, recently, I'm aware that uh, Anne complained about the role of the army. The army in return uh, lambasted the uh, INEC, uh, they were unfairly tested. Now, uh, I read that the IG gave out uh, instructions to the DIG and CPs, and among part of the things which he said, emphasis mine, oh, you should be patriotic, you should be neutral, you should be professional, you should be steadfast but firm. Now, when you are deploying these uh, people, I think common sense, the most important thing is, is to secure the sanctity of the electoral process. If people are conveying uh, election uh, results and they can be picked up like they grant a uh, snail, then I don't know the essence of deploying all the numbers on the field. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's dual to ensure that, okay, while a voting is going on, uh, hoodlums and uh, mischief makers, they are not able to tamper 
with the sanctity of the voting process and also the most important aspect when this thing is being taken that okay we are the ones entrusted with the responsibility to ensure that the votes of the people count and we are taking it to higher quarters. At that point in time, one would expect that security should be what they say, oh, the highest alert at the highest level. So when you find out that the, uh, whether it's the returning officer or the electoral officer, is just being picked with so much is that you start asking yourself, what is the essence of this uh, directive? Are they playing to the gallery or what? Is it that the people who are involved did not do their duty? Or the announcement made, for instance, by the IG was just a question of playing to the guy. These things, they mustn't just be swept aside like that. Because the essence of the point, this was, he assured that, oh, don't worry, go about this. The people there, they've been told, then what, where was the professionalism involved? If the same people, I assume, that they ought to guard, they were, there's what they call a dereliction of duty. So it's not something that should just be swept under the carpet, the usual, oh, we express our sympathy, we express our grief and all that. It has, otherwise, this would be like a kind of a uh, discouraging uh, factor to others because they will ask you, what is your interest in the course of uh, doing this? Are you giving any medal? Did you make any billions? And look at it, you got mm -hmm. a bullet for your credit just because uh, you are handing uh, elections. After all, we told you, Professor, this and that, could you have been able to prophesy this and all that? So the most important thing is, it's not just enough to report this. The uh, doorstep of this should lead squarely at the feet of the IG. If there are officers to be prosecuted, if there are those who have a dereliction of duty, let us get to the root of this because it's very, very important. It's going to discourage others in future. This thing we've just uh, mentioned here, they have uh, families. If the woman, and I pray, you understand, of course, that she'll be able to recuperate, get out of it and all that. Yeah. Naturally, you can't call her back in future and expect her to do the same thing. And others, too, will have a second thought. And I think the idea of uh, bringing in these people as, oh, these are best intellectuals, professors, who have paid their dues and all that. But one thing that is uh, happen, it's not just enough to report them. If there is no deterrent to ensure that such things don't happen again in the future, bad enough, we already have voter party. Are we going to have uh, electoral uh, officers uh, party too again? Or what are we going to call that? So it's very, very important to ensure that events like this, uh, not just there you say, oh, we are need, we are going to look into it. No, because that's the usual thing we hear. We are going to look at and events mm -hmm. there. Yeah, Mr. Wins, um, this is the figures that we have. Five DIGs were deployed oh. for this exercise. Fifteen commissioners of police, Jesus. meaning that three uh, across each of these states. And we see particularly in Kano yesterday where it appeared that thugs just had a field stay. It, it, it appeared that things didn't come under under control in the shortest possible time. Um, and you have talked about, not just you, a lot of people have talked about, um, <clears throat> we need to go back to the drawing board. And right now, I pity that drawing board because it's, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a heavy drawing board. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're dealing with so many, so, so many issues. Now, when you have things so convoluted like this, you then want to look at the, the low-hanging fruits where, where you, you, you start, you, you, you come in easy. What is the lowest and most effective low-hanging fruit that we need to, uh, to approach these humongous set of problems that we have in, in, in our electoral process? Well, the, the, um, the IG will deploy police, the army will deploy, and everyone, you know, but again, we find this kind of thing happening. This Benue woman, for instance, supposed to be escorted by the police with the electoral materials. Where were those policemen at this, that she got shot? That means there's something that is not working right. And this desperation for, you know, struggle for power, which is not supposed to be. And they have made the whole process to be like a do or die. It's like going to a war front. I have participated in the process. 2011, December, 2015, I participated. I just decided that uh, maybe I had an inkling that 2019 would be more violent than any other <laughs> one. Because of one, uh, you know, especially the presidential and all that other thing, all the struggle, all the uh, antagonisms that, you know, went on prior to the elections. I just knew that this election was going, was going to be a listen. But the question is, or the thing is, how can we make it? less, you know, I don't, I'm not sure. For as long as there's this struggle for power, 
people want to get to power, knowing that when they get this political power, it's easy access to economic power, economic access. They use it to enrich themselves. And politics is the highest business that can yield you money like this today. They have made it so. For as long as it's attractive, it's a way for people to get money and all that, enrich themselves overnight. Once you become this, you know, and people will wait. Four years, this thing, they'll call you and say, ah, we are ready for politics, it's time to make money. So that is one of the challenges. For as long as we, we, we think about it as a business, they set up uh, political parties with the mindset of uh, this mercantile mindset. Let us make the business. It will be a bit difficult for us to say, okay, we're going to have, a, in 2023, we're going to have a better business. It's going to grow worse. I think you just identified the first low-hanging fruit. Are you saying make politics less lucrative? Less lucrative. Let it be that, hey, if you're coming in, we've been preaching this for years. If you're going to be, uh, uh, serve the people, it could be part-time. You come in, you, you, you're paid allowances just for sitting in and all that. You don't, it's not a, a way of really making money, you know. And once we'll be able to do that, then, only then, you know, because that's what I keep saying about the system that we run. Are we ready to run a full-blown democracy that we do? We have seen that it's not working. You know, otherwise, these killings will not happen. So why don't we stop pretending and begin to find solution? As Nigerians, we are living in denial. We are pretending as if all these things don't matter. We are ostriching. We have to come to terms and say, look, tell ourselves the truth. These things, we have issues. What do we do about it? Why are all these things are happening? Well, let's begin to find solution. Mm. It's only in finding the solution when the nation, we are ready to begin to find solution. That's the only time the good people that will provide good governance will be thrown off. It you appears. Use, you use the word, sorry, you use the word desperation, yeah. which came to my mind. Yes. Is this at a risk of stating the obvious? A sign of increasing desperation increasing on, the parts, democracy. Yes. on the parts of those who would win at all costs or cause others to lose at all costs. No, win at all costs. It's the same point. Yeah, win at all costs. <laughs> because uh, one thing is, it, because they know that, uh, you know, political power gives them access to many things, especially economic power. So is that.